Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahillahi rabbil alamin. Wassalatu wassalamu ala Rasulillah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh my dear beloved brothers and sisters. Welcome to the Islamic Finance 360 webinar series um with uh, Dr. Said uh, Associate Professor Dr. Said Borawa. Uh, today's topic we will be discussing about the framework of conversion to uh, from conventional bank to Islamic banks, all right? Uh, my name is Ayuddin. I am your host and MC and moderator for today, inshallah. Um, if you're new here, alhamdulillah, welcome. This is the second uh, webinar out of three free webinars that we are organizing as part of the Islamic Islamic Finance 360 uh, series organized by Isra and Isra Consulting, as you can see in my background here. Um, right uh, before I actually start the uh, the uh, the session. Uh, proper let me just go through a few housekeeping rules uh if you if you if you're new to uh, zoom and uh, uh, you you want to ask questions we will have a presentation with uh, dr said for about 40 to 45 minutes and then we'll move on to the q and a sec- uh, se- section or session <laughs> the for any questions that you have please fill in or uh, type in your questions onto uh, the q and a section down below on the bottom of the screen and uh, if you have any uh, for the interest of time and because we are expecting more than 100 uh, participants for today uh, we won't be taking any uh, uh, any uh, verbal questions so if you have any questions please do fill in the uh, in the in the Q&A section yeah not the chat section but the Q&A all right so that uh, we have a team uh, behind the scene to go through and vet through the questions and I will get to as many questions as we can inshallah during the Q&A session. Um right. Also for those of you who are watching on YouTube, you can fill in you can type in your questions in the YouTube section. Again, our team will be monitoring YouTube and live uh here on Zoom as well inshallah. Right. A little bit about associate professor Dr. Said Borawa. He is currently the senior researcher and director of the research development and innovation uh, department here at ISRA, the National uh, Sharia Research Academy for Islamic Finance, and also a lecturer at the Global University of Islamic Finance in Sydney. He is the editor in chief of ISRA International Journal of Islamic Finance, an independent board member of Afin Islamic Bank, a Sharia member of the Central Bank of Oman, a chairman of Islamic of Afin Islamic Sharia Committee. and uh, other uh, chairman members or, or member of the boards of uh, various uh, banks around the world as well inshallah alhamdulillah he has published five books and six chapters in books of several articles in refer, uh, referred journals uh, he has also presented several papers at various international conferences uh, and has conducted several trainings in islamic banking and finance in malaysia and internationally so without any further ado i don't want to take too much time So with that I'll pass the virtual floor on to Dr. Said Fadl Ishaq. Thank you very much Brother Azuddin. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin was salatu was salam ala asyrafil anbiya'i wal mursalin sayidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma 'allamtana innaka antal alimul hakim. Allahumma 'allimna ma yanfa'una wa anfa'na bima 'allamtana. وزدنا علما وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته a very good uh, afternoon for those who are living in Asia and Southeast Asia and very good morning for those who are in Middle East and uh, Europe so because now it's 3:30 uh, 3 p.m. Malaysian time it's my uh, pleasure and privilege to try my best to contribute the summary of the framework of conversion from conventional bank to islamic bank in fact this is a huge topic that needs a series of presentation however we have agreed that to to present a gist or summary of the framework and we may have inshallah ta'ala other opportunities to go into details with regards to what we are going to present for today because of the time constraints just 1 hour and 40 minutes presentation however we will do our best to present the core fundamentals of the framework of uh, conversion of course as you all know the conversion is becoming uh, pressing request from the 
depositors and uh, uh, a huge interest to the shareholders and to the investors. And if you can see the trend of conversion, trends of establishment of Islamic Bank, you will see that it's from one side becoming a huge trend requested, as I mentioned, by the depositors. And also, it's, it's, it becomes a business investment to improve the position of the investors, shareholders, and other things. However, the core issues that many, in many, not say generalized, but in many jurisdictions, they have faced is the issue of the framework for conversions and the step to be uh, adhered to, to be taken to ensure that the conversion is going smooth, comprehensive, and uh, adhering to the rules and the regulations of the regulatory or supervisory uh, entity or establishment, either central bank or uh, other supervisory bodies. So that's why the ISRA, they have initially uh, undertaken some exercise to present the concept of conversion. But recently, we have embarked into huge research with regards to the framework of conversion. It's uh, near 200 pages uh, of research that is going to see the light in, inshallah ta'ala, within one or two maximum three months time that our readers will enjoy reading the details of, of this one. However, we, as ISRA, we have or also planned to have a manual for conversion to ease the, the task of the, the uh, banks or investors willing to convert. And uh, because based on my, our experience, our exposure, our interaction with different jurisdictions, especially in Northern Africa and Western Africa, who are really keen to convert Central Asia also, where ISRA and ISRA consultancy, they are doing a huge work to assist the central banks and the banks to, to, to undertake the conversion in a comprehensive, holistic, smooth way. Therefore, we believe that the framework and the futurely, inshallah, in the future, the, the, uh, the manual, the comprehensive manual for conversion will be, inshallah ta'ala, available for the, the experts, the, reader, the readers, and the industry players to ensure that their process of conversion is a, a, a comprehensive, a correct, and a smooth one. Now, I have a presentation that I will share uh, I will do my best to be as brief as I can to give the opportunity for the uh, our dear uh, participant to ask questions and uh, also to add their their inputs because I believe that among the participants we have uh, experts, we have scholars, we have industry players, we have those who are in the regulatory and legal department who are really doing their best to ensure uh, smooth and uh, effective conversion of, of the bank. Now, yes, okay, uh, this is my PowerPoint slides. I hope that you can see my slide presentation. Okay, so for the outline, what I'm going to present in brief is the, an introduction and uh, the Sharia Foundation, Foundation for Conversion country's preferred model of conversion, conversion guidelines by international standard setting, and uh, existing national standards, and also relevant policies requirement. And I will give in brief, present in brief framework for conversion, and I will end it by some challenges that needs to be observed and uh, uh, how to say over, uh, overcome to ensure that the conversion is uh, successful. Because the big challenge is that when you start a conversion and if it's, if it's not successful, it may have repercussion and a bad image and reputation with regard with regards to, to the, the, the uh, image of, of, of Islam and Islamic banking. So this is the outline.
Now, as an introduction, when we embarked into our research, we realized that there are, we can say there is a limited, there are limited references in guiding banks for conversion. And I will explain this in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the following slides. And also there is what is, what we have a problem in terms of fundamental Sharia issues in the process of conversion. And uh, which I, I'm going to present in terms of Sharia challenges, but one of the core one is whether we have to, we have to go lenient or we have to be strict from the beginning, not to mimic any uh, conventional product, even with the intention of making it Islamic. So the, the issue of Rukhsa and Azima, and just for your information, the issue of uh, going for the Azima, the, the fundamental Sharia uh, obligation, or going for the, an exception is going to be a theme of our uh, ISSF for this year, which is going to be held in November 10 and 11. The third point of introduction, the importance of investing in the entity that aims to switch to Islamic banking which means there are governments government that they are really keen to convert, but they don't have the means, they don't have the, they don't have the guidelines, the policies, regulations. Instead of criticizing those governments, we, are, we have the obligation as experts, academia, researchers, to assist them by uh, contributing in terms of writings, them of articles, research, if you are a university to, to organize conferences to make, to show that conversion is not that complex, is not that difficult, it's easy if we take the right steps. And also the board, the board sometimes, my, I, I, I'm a member of board of Afin Islamic, and uh, when you start as a Sharia uh, expert background, of course board, they will have some reservations but when you interact with them will you realize that sometimes is uh, is not right to uh, how to say make judgment towards the others but try our best to interact because there are many members in general assembly who are investors or board of directors or other investors they are they have no objections to convert to islamic but they need to get clarity they need to get interaction they need to get people who are expert in this area to, to uh, share with them their expertise and to give them some kind of comfort. Qualitative movement in accelerating the transformation process is very important. You have to establish the theoretical part. You have to establish the technical part. And also you have to establish the applied part, the implementation. Those three areas are very important in the process of of, of uh, conversion. And uh, I have some experience or at least one or two because they did not observe those three core fundamentals. The foundation, the, 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 the conversion did not, uh, how to say, kick off very well because there was confusion in terms of the theoretical background, in terms of products, in terms of technical part. And this has caused them a bit of, how to say, disturbance and also it will affect the, the depositors perception. So those are the introductory remarks that I want to present before going to the next part. Now for the Sharia, I think the Sharia justification for conversion, I think for those who are experts in this area, it's obvious that the Muslim depositor, even Muslim investor, Muslim shareholder, he is commanded by Allah subhanahu wa to adhere uh, to Islamic banking and finance in terms of Sharia rules and principles. And, uh, and one of the core rules and principles of Sharia is the prohibition of riba, gharar, maizer, qimar, gambling, and uh, all those are present in the conventional banking. And also the, one of the justification is the clear fundamental incompatibility between Islamic bank and their conventional counterpart. I think it's clear and obvious that conventional banks, the end result will be uh, loan with interest with all different names, different acronyms and different terminologies. Because at the end of the situation, 
it will end by extending loan and uh, expecting repayment of principal plus interest. And if you default or you delay, it will be a compounded interest. The third thing is that the bank customer's relationship is fundamentally different because from Islamic banking, regardless of the financial climate or environment that is not fully supportive of the fundamental relationship, but in with the with the conventional banking is creditor and uh, and debtor but for islamic bank it's a depositor in terms of wadia or investors in terms of mudaraba or partners in terms of musharaka or musharaka mutanaqisa so those are the core differences and i believe that the participants uh, they are aware of other differences uh, with regards to sharia justification uh, with regards to countries' preferred model of conversion, there are countries who prefer to start with the full-fledged. For example, in Malaysia in 1983, Malaysia government, when they decided to start with Islamic banking, the first thing that they have done, they have issued enactment for Islamic banking, an act, a law, and they have started with Bank Islam, a full-fledged Islamic bank. And they did not allow to establish any other bank. It was near to 10 years to ensure the success of Bank Islam. And after 93, they have allowed to establish windows and the subsidiaries. Uh, Malaysia, if you, sp you ask about Malaysia uh, preference for the now, the Central Bank of Malaysia, they are not in preference of establishing windows. They, they allow establishing windows, but they prefer having subsidiary. Subsidiary to be independent in terms of balance sheet, in terms of reporting, in terms of infrastructure. Of course, there is a possibility. They allow leveraging on conventional, but it has to be different mandate, different objectives, and different balance sheet and other things. There are countries who banned the establishment of windows and you are aware that qatar for example they have prohibited traditional banks bank windows uh, bank to convert into uh, they, are, they have prohibited they, are, they are prohibited traditional bank windows which means conventional bank they are not allowed to open window they can convert to full flesh but they cannot uh, they cannot uh, open window they can merge with other banks to establish a full-fledged Islamic bank, but not wind. UAE and Bahrain also, for instance, for insurance that I know, insurance company, they don't allow window. You have to establish a takaful company. Uh, most Muslim countries prefer to start with windows and uh, slowly transform them into either subsidiaries or full-fledged. Full and uh, this is sometimes you give them some uh, some room for excuse <laughs> because first of all yes regardless of the ideal ideological and political approach because someone who does not know he will believe that this will be associated with with uh, with extremism or whatever even terrorism which is not the case at all proof of that is that european countries they are establishing islamic banks with even the name of islamic so and also but mainly it's because because of uh, the weak and ambiguous legal framework so they are they don't have a comprehensive solid sound comprehensive legal prep framework so they don't want to venture to go for full fledged because there is no platform legal uh, supervisory and regulatory uh, framework for this one so for them it's easy to go for Windows. My personal view, though I prefer full-fledged and subsidiary, but there is no objection in my view to start with Windows for those countries who are not familiar with Islamic Bank, condition that they adhere to the conditions, the terms and conditions for the establishment of Window. But I, I, I urge them to start with Window, but have a vision. Yes, I can say that short term, medium term for the five, next five years, I will go for window, but I have to have a long term project to extend it to convert it to to full fledged or at least subsidiary that I'm going to 
present, for example, Standard Chartered and also uh, <laughs> Afin Islamic Window, it became subsidiary, and even uh, HSBC Amana, it became an independent subsidiary, branch converted to an independent one, uh, which is fully Islamic. Now with the existing conversion guidelines by international standard setting body, if a researcher who wants to do exercise research, who want to explore the, the existing standard, he will find that IOF, and which is really uh, great work from them, they have issued Sharia standard number six on conversion. It was procedures, mechanism, and for conversion from a conventional bank to Islamic bank. So also, there are four theme, themes in this standard. One is uh, Sharia governance, conversion procedures, system, and control, and Sharia instruments, and uh, treatments of, of uh, conventional assets. Uh, come participants, uh, please bear with us. We are trying to get uh, Dr. Said uh, back online. Seems to be uh, an issue with the connection. So apologies for that. Please bear with us. Uh, we're trying to sort out the issue uh, as, as soon as we can, inshallah. Disconnected. We're back. Okay, alhamdulillah. Okay. Okay. You can oh, that. okay. Okay, I'm very sorry, yeah? This is unusual, but it happens sometimes. <laughs> uh, can you hear me? Uh, okay? Yes. Okay, so uh, as I, I did mention that it's good to review the standards and also the standard is not comprehensive. When I met people, my friends in, in Morocco and Algeria, they are saying that there is no detailed standardization guideline to, to, for the conversion into the establishment of window and subsidiary. Yes, it's general, but it needs to be uh, granular in, in, with regards to the, the different forms of conversion. But it's a comprehensive one. It's a valuable one with the proposition to review it. And Alhamdulillah, I feel they are doing a huge effort to review the standards and they have reviewed several standards and they hope that this will be in their pipeline. Now this is okay. We have the IFSB guide, guiding principle on conversion. Of course, IFSB, they did not dedicate guideline or for conversion. However, their uh, standard 17, 16, 9, they have all discussed partially the areas of consideration in the conversion process. So uh, there are all those three standards, they are designed, we can really benefit them in our process of, of the conversion. So those three guidelines, one issued in 2009, the other one in 2014, the third one is 2015. With regards to the existing standards, we have Pakistan Regulatory Guideline for Conversion. It was issued in 2017. I believe that I don't need to go into many details, but this is this guideline uh, details the criteria for existing conventional bank branch to convert into uh, banking Islamic banking branch. It seems that they prefer to go for full flesh, but they did not explicitly mention this one. Indonesia policy requirement for conversion also they have issued in 2006, the uh, Bank Indonesia regulation uh, number 83 uh, PBI, 
uh, it was amended in 2007 also. The title is Concerning Conversion of Business of Conventional Commercial Bank to Commercial Bank Conducting Business Based on Sharia Principle and the Establishment of Bank Offices Conducting Business Based on Sharia Principle by Conventional Commercial Bank, which means they, they speak here about the windows also. Bank Nigara Malaysia, though they have not issued a uh, uh, guideline with the name of conversion, but they have their guideline issued in 1993 on interest-free. They did not call it Islamic or they call it interest-free banking scheme. It was issued in July 1993 for licensed conventional institution to operate Islamic banking services on a window basis. Uh, this, I, as I mentioned, after 10 years, and they have also, uh, so they will, they give them the guideline how to issue, how to establish window. And in 1998, the scheme was changed to Islamic banking scheme, uh, popularly known as scheme per bankan, per bankan, per bankan Islamic. Later in uh, 2012, uh, also they have issued the revised guideline. So from Bank Nigara perspective, any conventional banks, or investment banks that are interested in offering Islamic banking, they have to adhere to the, the mentioned guideline. Now, with regards to Middle East and North Africa, MENA, of course, in North Africa, there is no guideline for conversion. Of course, there are ordinance, clause, laws, separate law, or embedded law in the general banking law. But in terms of guideline for conversion, what we can find, what we have found in the Middle East is uh, the circular to guide conversion issued by the Central Bank of Egypt and the Central Bank of Kuwait. So those are the two circulars that they were in hand. And if someone knows other circular, we will be more than happy to get that. But based on our, our uh, research, our examination, those are the two uh, available guideline for the CBE allows the establishment of an Islamic bank branch under the, a conventional bank. However, in the Kuwait, they no, they are not in favor of having Islamic product within a conventional bank, whether in the form of subsidiary or window. They prefer they opt for con conversion to full fledged Islamic bank if you aim for conversion. So those are the difference between the Egypt uh, guideline uh, circular and the Kuwait Central Bank Kuwait circular. Now, when we have examined the approaches for conversion, we have found that even IOFI they have already indicated they have explained in general the approaches for conversion. There is one proactive, it's called proactive comprehensive, aggressive approach. So this refers to a conversion process of the whole conventional bank into full-fledged Islamic bank within immediate effect and in a comprehensive manner. So this is what is called proactive approach, which means there is a decision of the board to convert the bank into Islamic, and they will have the vision and mission, they will have the timeline, the feasibility study, and they will submit the, after the resolution of the board, they will submit the application for the central bank and they will start the process. And the process usually takes between three months to one year because they decided, of course, those banks who are going for proactive, comprehensive, they don't go for it unless they have some motivations or preparations. Some, some of them, for example, my experience with ICD, they will move some banks to move to full fledged and they will give them support. They will contribute in their paid up capital. We have the, the initial push of ICD for uh, Bank of Suriname. Suriname, though the population is just 15 to 16%, but trust Amana Bank, it was conventional window, but they have converted the full-fledged Islamic banks with the promise of ICD to, to be part, to be a member shareholders by percentage. So this is the approach of proactive and comprehensive or aggressive conversion. 
what are the advantages of proactive approaches? It attracts depositors who abstain from dealing with conventional banks for religious reasons. Of course, depositors, they prefer to have a full-fledged window subsidiary if the law is, the regulator is a sound, strong one, central banks, they are robust and the, the rules and regulations, they are sound and they are strict, they may accept window and, and subsidiary. But for, if the regulator, the regulator or supervisor is not that, is a bit lax, or the regulation is not that robust and sound, people, they prefer to put their money in full-fledged systemic banks because there is no commingling of funds between conventional and the Islamic. So this is one of the advantages. With the commitment to the conversion timeline, the bank can first tap into the market as compared to the organic approach. When you say, I am going to be a full-fledged conventional, so there will be no hesitation. They will not, uh, the mentality of the depositor will not be wait and see. Whereas if window or subsidiary, they will say wait and see whether they are adhering to the terms and conditions where they are really Sharia compliant, banking or just, uh, just uh, superficial Islamic bank, but the end result will be conventional. So they will be, they, they will be able to tap the market first. Disadvantage, it may affect the bank's reputation in the event of resistance from some customers to convert the conventional bank account. We have experience without naming the bank that some banks, because of the resistance of big shareholders and big investors who are depositing millions, the bank took up to 15 years, 10 years resisting, even enticing the depositors, but they say, no, we will not accept. So they, it took them a long time to convince, and sometimes it's very hard for them to discard these huge depositors because it will affect their, their business altogether. It may also lead to adverse effect in the event of lack of support by regulator. You go for conventional in, in an environment, in a situation where the regulator is not supporting you with the guidelines, with the, with the, with the ordinance, with laws. You will, you will make ad hoc ishtihad, ad hoc, how to say, decision that may affect your situation. And even international investors they will, they will, they will uh, abstain from, or they will, they will, uh, yes, abstain, or they will not be motivated to invest in 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 your bank because because of the lack of sound regulations. So this is one of the the uh, disadvantage of proactive, which is aiming for full conversion. There is what is called a passive. A passive is not a negative, but it's, uh, we call it, pass they call it passive. They call it organic growth, which means from within, as I mentioned, standard chartered, uh, uh, Afin Islamic, uh, HSBC, even for Maybank Islamic, it was there as a, uh, as a, as a from the convention that has established a subsidiary. So this is called organic growth because from the same bank, they have decided to convert their assets and liabilities into Islamic. And it's called also step-by-step, step-by-step -step conversion approach. So the process practically it's similar to proactive approach, except occurrence within an extended time frame. And this is called entailed conversion. And based on IUFI standard, it's not, the bank will not be considered Islamic until it fulfills all the requirements, which means the process of one year, you cannot claim that you are Islamic bank until you complete and you get the final approval and the licensing from the central bank. Uh, advantages of the organic approach, it signifies the flexibility of Sharia ah and ease for human capital who are doing the conversion. It means they will do it properly, gradually. These, these are, of course, justification. And uh, progressively. 
Also, it gives all stakeholders, especially depositors who lacks awareness of Islamic banking operations, greater leeway in the conversion process. They will, because some resistance from the shareholders or investors or even depositors is because of ignorance. It's not because Islamic banking is not that right, but it's ignorance. But the process of time, uh, we call it, we say in Arabic, uh, the time is part of the cure so it gives them time to understand the concept of Islamic banking, the processes, and they will appreciate. And after appreciating, it will be easy to start the work. Disadvantages of the organic approach, which, is, which are real disadvantages, the real concern raised by the depositors and the investors, it raises concerns of Sharia compliant depositors about the bank's seriousness in complying with Sharia requirements. They would say, sorry, Windows and uh, the same owner is shareholder and also segregation of funds, how, what is our guarantee and also whatever profit will go to this window, it will be channeled to the, to the uh, parent bank and the reporting will be within the same balance sheet that just, just the items related to each other, whatever is so people, they will start questioning the compliance of the whole window. It may be less with regards to subsidiary because subsidiary is an independent board of directors, independent fund, independent reporting in terms of reporting, financial reporting, two different balance sheet, two different reporting. Can be a drag on the converting back when time of, is of the essence in business, which means it will take time and people they are who decided to go for aggressive, proactive, swift conversion, they will they will they will consume all most of the important depositors and investors. So which means you will lose time and you will lose you will lose depositors and investors. Now with regards to form or co of conversion, we spoke about the approach of conversion. Now we discuss the forms of conversion. There is what is called macro or full conversion, which means the country, they will not convert bank or banks. They will convert the system. Conversion of the whole financial system of a country into Islamic. And this is uh, known in Sudan, Iran, and it was initiated in Pakistan, and it was announced in Brunei. I don't know whether it's completed now in Brunei. So those are, they decided not to speak about converting Islamic banks, but they will convert the whole system. Of course, if you convert the whole system, there will be no room for conventional banks. There is semi-macro conversion. This is my own terminology. <laughs> I, 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 I found that, no, it's, no, it's not written in the, in the literature, but for me, it's not micro and it's not macro, it's semi-micro conversion. The creation of an independent Islamic banking system besides the conventional system. This is the experience of Malaysia. Malaysia, they have two dual, they call it dual system. So for the Islamic system, it will absorb all the Islamic banks. Conventional, it will absorb the conventional banks. It's not macro or full conversion because there is still room for conventional. But if you want to go for Islamic bank, you have to go under the umbrella of the Islamic financial system. And there is an enactment in 1983. Uh, and there is the latest re re revision is in 2013, the IFSA, Islamic financial uh, system. And this, the IFSA, uh, was is translated by IDB. Now we have you have even the version. It's free version of the law of Islamic banking in Malaysia translated into Arabic. This is I call it my semi micro conversion. There is the semi macro. Now we have before macro conversion. Now we have micro or partial conversion. Conversion of selected financial sector only, either banking, takaful capital market or so in this micro yes it's concerned with the banks but they will not address the system the system is still conventional so we have within this micro 
we have a full conversion of the entire conventional bank into an Islamic bank. So this is, for example, Agro Bank and uh, Banker Jassama, Bank Ra'yat in Malaysia. I'm giving the example of Malaysia, and you can find in Middle East, there's Kuwait, Kuwait Financial House. They converted in full, full-fledged Islamic, Islamic banks. We have Kuwait Financial House, and we have also the National Bank of Sharjah, uh, also the United Arab Emirates uh, converted into Islamic Trust Bank, as I mentioned, Trust Bank converted to Trust Bank Amana. So this is the, the more comprehensive conversion form within the micro or partial conversion. We have conversion of Islamic windows into full-fledged. We have Bank Bumiputra Berhad converted with into, we have uh, also the CIMB windows converted into a bank. We have other, other banks and also conversion of Islamic windows into Islamic banking subsidiaries. Malaysia is known to, to promote at least conversion into subsidiary. They don't prohibit conversion into uh, creating windows, but they prefer subsidiary because of the uh, rules, differentiation, independency in terms of rules, regulations, reporting and everything. And in this area, we have a plenty of banks that they have converted their conventional either window or branches or part into fully Islamic, uh, Maybank Islamic, uh, uh, Standard Chartered Amana, uh, also Afin, as I mentioned, Afin Islamic and other banks. Conversion of one or more branch of conventional bank into an Islamic branch or opening an Islamic branch under Islamic. So it's conventional branch converted into, into like a branch or, or window. Of course, the, the, they call it, there is a counter. There is a counter providing just Islamic product and there is also a window. Merger and acquisition. One of the way of conversion also known in, 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 in Islamic countries, Middle East and Malaysia, is the merger and acquisition in parallel with outright conversion of conventional financial assets and the ability to become Islamic one. So there is a merger of two, one Islamic and the other one is not Islamic. So they will convert in the meantime, they will decide to go fully Islamic. And BSB holding, acquire Asia Finance Bank and converted the bulk of its assets and liabilities, which were Sharia non-compliant to become full-fledged Islamic bank. Now you say, you ask how, I will tell you that this is the, the Sharia uh, issue of whether we use Rukhsa or Azima. So most of those banks, they will use Tawarruq to convert the assets and liability. And uh, there is no issue with IOFI standards for liquidity management and conversion. If you go to the standard of conversion of IOFI, you will find many leeways in terms of uh, relax clause to facilitate the conversion. And I advise you to go through the uh, standards. Uh, there is MBSB also holding, they are in the final, I think they have completed. There are many who merger with the condition that the conventional be converted into Islamic, and this has happened in Malaysia in two or three or three banks. Now, this is where I will not go into, into details because I have already going to reach the those are the framework for conversion. And I, 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 as I mentioned, the conversion, I, we have a research of 100 page and maybe next, uh, my next presentation is to discuss in details those three core components of conversion. They are considered, we consider them framework of conversion. If you want to convert a bank from conventional to Islamic, you have to have a policies for conversion and you have to have a processes for conversion and you have to have a procedures for conversion. If you, policies is, if we definish of policy, just to understand the difference. Huh? A statement of expectation that is enforced by standards and further implementation by procedures, this is the policy. Processes refers to related activities that produce a specific service or 
product. Example, procurement to payment. Those are processes. And the, and the procedures, the, the, sometimes they are, inter, they are uh, how to say, synonyms or they are used intelligibly with the processes, but procedures, they are uh, as, as defined specific instruction necessary to perform a task or part of process or formal method of doing something. This is general definition and you can see the literature, the difference between processes and uh, procedures. Policies that are key. Now, when it comes to policies, and you will find huge details in the policies, one is the regulatory approval. There is the pre-approval, which means I allow you, of course, in central bank, when you want to do the merger or the acquisition, you have to get the permission from the central bank, which is a good one in terms of maintaining uh, integrity and ensuring that they are not going to venture into a bank which has problem with the assets or even even political or 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 uh, low low uh, how to say uh, not breaching the international law so the permission from central bank to to enter into discussion but if you are organic conversion you will have the pre approval from bank to start the to start the processes of conversion. Bank, the central bank will not give you the pre-agreement unless you have a resolution of the board and other, other necessity documentation which the time does not permit. And you have to present sh governor, uh, governance structure, Sharia requirement, you have even to send proposed Sharia committee members and you have to also show, send the, you have to have a managerial and operational requirement. You have to have in place human resource, customers and public awareness. And also you have to put into place the conversion review, review and at the end the audit. This is the policy part. Those are a full set of documents. In our research, we have them into details, details that if someone wants to do conversion, he will get a clear picture on the step-by-step -step processes and what they need for documentation in terms of policy. For the process for convention, you have convention, you have to have it into phases. You cannot rush to go third phase before the first phase. So initial phase, you have to have due diligence, feasibility study, and you have after this to have a planning phase, what you are going to do in this step. When this step will end, you have to keep your eyes, timeline, the person in charge, uh, executing the phases. Of course, you have to identify the departments, the individuals, the persons, and you have to have the, uh, the how to say, checklist to assess their performance and monitoring and controlling phase, which you monitor the, the, the performance or the conversion processes. And after that, the closing, the closing phase where you will do the marketing and the other things. For the procedures for conversion, of course, as I mentioned, feasibility study on the conversion. You have to prove that the conversion is successful because of the market demand, because of the uh, business viability and other things. Also internal approval, as I mentioned before, you have to have the board approval, you have to have management, regulatory approval, conversion, launching, and the statutory, statutory reporting, of course, here in Malaysia, every year by June, each bank, they have to report the financial position or financial uh, statement of the uh, bank, and you have to have administration in place. So those are the core part of the framework of conversion for conversion and those needs to be explained one by one, but this needs one or two lectures to get them into details, but people who are in, in the business of conversion, they know all in details those framework part of the conversion. I will not go into details in terms of the uh, priorities or the, uh, how to say, the 
advantages of uh, disadvantages of converting into Windows and converting into subsidiary, converting into full fledged. For example, Islamic Window, the it's based on leverage structure and based on allocated capital from the conventional bank, and uh, they share the balance sheet as I mentioned. So management team, they are conventional. Conventional coin backing system terminologies just change, changed and enhanced. And documentation they have to be changed into Sharia. Identify Sharia touch point to enhance processes designed based on Islamic contract. Separate treasury structure to build to be built and managed independently. Though there are some critics that yes you separate them, but the end result of the profit will be channel to conventional and this will support the conventional though I think if you follow the processes and terms and conditions even window with the good governance good Sharia governance I think they can ensure independency and uh, clear separation in terms of funds treasury and other Accounting, of course, separate general ledger to be built and flow through into different books. Yes, though in terms of financial presentation at the end of the year, you will present them within one balance sheet, but the items are different. They will show the items of Sharia compliant transactions and the product. So new documents, new process, new system. Of course, the problem of that I am going to mention the range of products and also services. Islamic subsidiary, it can be also based on leverage structure. Many subsidiaries here in Malaysia and other places still are using the same IT system. Uh, however, the capital, uh, it can be done. You can get the capital from the parent to establish subsidiary. However, the balance sheet stands alone and the board, management, CEOs, they are all independent. And those are the management team Islamic conventional core banking system can be leveraged and the challenges is alignment with parent bank. Sometimes you have subsidiary, but you have some challenges to align it with the parent bank strategic direction. And everything is standalone. You can see standalone structure, standalone capital and standalone balance sheet and everything is all Islamic but uh, what what one of the core challenges is the operation operating costs especially in the initial part and the cost to income is one of the key elements to assess the Islamic bank if you got the income 100 and your cost is 80 that's that's going to be you are we are going to be put in a negative position because your profit is minimal uh, that's why uh, one of the core uh, how to say, uh, element of assessment is is income to capital, cost, and, uh, co cost, cost to capital. Some banks, because of the efficiency of operating costs, because of the either leverage model, mainly because of the leverage model, it can be cost can be less than even 30%, 30, 32%, which means the, the bulk of the profit is, is very, very high. This is, this is, uh, coming to the conversion windows subsidiary and the the banks and and the full flash now what are the core governance challenges Many minutes left wow i have finished 42 minutes sorry yeah the governance challenges of conversion the issue of standardization to which conventional bank banks refer to there is a huge as i mentioned in the beginning there is a huge issue of standardization each jurisdiction each country has its own approach to conversion. And since there is no standardization, there will be conflict of the approach of conversion that will affect the quality of conversion. And this is the responsibility of regulator and supervisor. And also this is the responsibility of the uh, international uh, supporting body like IOF, Majma and other things. The issue of managing Islamic window and how to achieve independence of work within the framework of the overall structure. I have already explained this one and it's a big issue, but I believe that if the governance is in place, if there is a robust, strong governance regulations, strong supervision by the central banks, I believe this can be 
overcame by, by adhering to the law. One of the core challenges, governance challenges, is the issue of key performance indicator. It's, it's, it's demotivating the, when you put the key KPIs, it sometimes demotivate the one in charge of the Islamic, promoting Islamic pro product to work harder and to attract customers. They will tell him your KPI is 20%. When he reaches 20%, he will, they will ask him either to go for conventional or to reduce the, the, how to say, aggressiveness of marketing. Now, of course, this has happened in many cases, but now banks, they are, they are departing from this approach of KPI. They are flexible in KPI, so they allow, but this is still a challenge that needs to be addressed. The pricing of Islamic financial product to prevent the customer from moving to conventional. In some, advanced jurisdiction like Malaysia, there is, uh, there is no double taxation, tax neutrality. They, they are doing whatever they, they have established, the, the harmonization unit, whatever uh, terms and conditions and rules and regulations will put, put Islamic bank in disadvantage. They will harmonize the rules and regulation to put the Islamic bank and conventional bank at par. That's why in reality now in Malaysia, the pricing of conventional and Islamic, they are almost similar. There is also marketing limitation because of, there is one because of the Sharia constraint, Qard, you cannot promote the Qard product, whereas the conventional debt, you can promote it, you have, you have, you can have lucky draw and all the stories. And you can, you also, the expertise in terms of Islamic banking, in terms of marketing is not as advanced as uh, conventional. Three minutes, yes, I will finish. I think the Sharia, the Sharia, the core Sharia concern is the intention of the converters. Sometimes the shareholders and the, and the, the managers, they, they are saying that this is profitable, this is a lucrative business. We just go to get some additional profit, maximize profit, but we will have no issue with mimicking conventional or maximize it for, for the maximization, maximization of profit. So maybe the intention is not bad, but the awareness is not there. So this will affect the direction of the bank. Seen as a matter of cooperation, some, some uh, deposited, they will say that, sorry, you have a window, you channel, you do, the, uh, you do the business of window. When you get the profit, you will channel it to the conventional and they will enhance their position and they will use the, your profit to, to uh, extend loan with interest, which is not, necessarily the case because when you own the profit it's your it's it's there and they can maintain the the capital is there and the profit is still can be still with the uh, window the one of the challenges is the startup capital some of them they are saying this capital is coming from conventional how can we accept it practically i think uh, practically from the iufi and others there is no issue with the 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 source of capital as long as long as you establish this one for islamic perspective that's no issue. That's why IOFI allows syndicate financing when conventional bank comes with Islamic banks, they commingle their, their capital to enter into, of course, condition enter into Sharia compliant product, let's say, uh, such as, uh, such as Mudaraba or Musharak. Reserve management, money market operation, those are big issues in terms of treasury part. The issue of the act consequences, and you will see that they are saying that may devolve into two illegitimate, which means when you establish a window, for example, you will say that this is justification to legitimate non-establishment of full-fledged. So this is ma'al uh, al-fi'al to prevent establishing full-fledged comprehensive Islamic banking. This, the restriction of the product introduced to those mimicking conventional, these are what I mentioned. I think this is the last slides I will stop here because I have already gone beyond the time. The, what is needed now, standardization and of comprehensive guidelines for conversion, this is really needed and it's not difficult. A human capital development, the human capital development is key to a successful, comprehensive, holistic, holistic uh, seamless conversion, enhancing the regulatory and supervisory structure. This, I understand that it has to evolve. You cannot expect a country who embark into conversion today to have this one fully, but it has to be part of their vision and mission to enhance the regulatory and supervisory structure, strengthening the governance of Islamic banks, especially windows and subsidiaries, 
yes, uh, preferable to have full flesh, but you can have window condition that you strengthen the governance and also this prospect of cross border transaction is one of the prospect when you have those Islamic banks, it will ease the liquidity management and the cross border transaction. This is my presentation and uh, I maybe I passed five minutes my time allocated. Of course, as I mentioned, this is a summary of the framework and inshallah in the next presentations, I will go in details in each part of my presentation. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh and waiting for your inputs and questions. MashaAllah, Jazakallah khair, uh, Dr. Said. That was a very uh, good presentation, alhamdulillah. I hope everyone here benefited from the, the presentation and uh, from the questions. We do have a lot of questions uh, and I, we will try my, I will try my best to get all of them uh, answered and, and uh, addressed in, uh, in 30 minutes, inshallah. Um, okay, but before that, uh, I would just let, welcome everyone for those who joined in uh, maybe midway through the presentation. Welcome to the uh, webinar entitled uh, Framework of, for, of Conversion from Conventional Bank uh, to Islamic Bank. As uh, this is our second webinar, uh, free webinar as part of the Islamic Finance uh, 360 series. If you want to know more about the webinars and the conferences, we are holding the annual conferences uh, this year virtually. Uh, first, we have uh, Muzakara 14, which is happening on the uh, on the 13th and 14th of uh, October, and uh, ISSF 2020, which is happening on the 10th and 11th of November. Uh, Dr. Said mentioned a little bit about ISSF uh, during his presentation, and we have the Islamic FinTech Dialogue happening at uh, on the first and second of December, inshallah, all happening virtually on uh, Zoom. And if you want more information about these uh, virtual conferences and the webinars that you've been watching, uh, please log on to if360.isra.my. If360.isra.my. Uh, I will I'll put in the link in the uh, in the chat section on on Zoom and the comment section on uh, YouTube as well. All right. Um, a number of questions about uh, more on housekeeping and operations. Uh, so I'll address this, uh, those first. For those who, who missed the previous session on, on uh, Friday with uh, uh, Professor Dr. Akram, we will upload uh, that video and this video as well on our YouTube and Facebook accounts, right? And, and we will email everyone the, uh, the, uh, the links for that. Uh, hopefully within uh, within a week, inshallah. And um, if you are asking about the presentation, unfortunately, we are not able to uh, share the presentation. But we, again, you can you are free to watch uh, rewatch the video uh, in your free time, inshallah. Because uh, the the presentation, uh, both uh, from Dr. Said and Prof. Akram, is actually part of uh, another series of events uh, of, of webinar. So you know we want to. So the best, uh, the best stuff for, for later, inshallah. All right, uh, Dr. Saeed, we will get to the first question, inshallah. Wow, that's a lot of questions. Okay, first one. Um, doctor, is it permissible to bring forward uh, retained earning from conventional bank previously, which, is, uh, which compromises of interest income? My general answer is yes. Whatever conversion is done from conventional, it has, it, it can, it, it, uh, it, 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 it's accepted to transfer the whole bulk of the assets of the conventional into Islamic, including retained earning. So this is my general uh, view. You may have a different view on this one, but for me, when it comes to conversion, and it's it's the whole conversion, and there will be uh, how to say flexibility or uh, ease in terms of addressing those retained earning or uh, though they are from conventional. Proof of that: there are those there are those who are saying that when those non-believers, mushrikin, they converted to Islam, though they are known to to trade into riba none of them was asked by the Prophet to, to uh, give away portion of his money to, to conversion. For me, my general view is that we should not go into, the, into the, these details, whatever any 
conventional bank converting to Islamic, it can convert the whole assets and profit make into Islamic. Just the remaining, the, the existing transactions that they are conducting, which are based on conventional contract, it has to be converted into Islam. This in general, you may have different view, but this is my position when it comes to conversion of conventional. Uh, second, what, uh, second question, what is the real advantage of conversion into Islamic bank from, commercial, from the commercial perspective? Uh, so if the board or the senior management will ask this question, what is the best answer? I will give you, just to answer this question, I will give you just simple, uh, simple example. My country, Algeria, they are saying that near to 60% of the liquidity is in the black market, is in the parallel market. And they are saying out of, his, out of the 60%, there is a bulk of 60 let's say 30% is because of religious consideration. Now, if you capture, if you establish an Islamic bank and you capture just 30% of this liquidity, out of this 30%, you will capture just 15%. It's a huge, lucrative, huge business for those who wants to establish Islamic banks. Because especially I know that Northern African, African, Middle East, and even Central Asia, there are many investors, depositors, that they are hesitant to deposit their money because of religious considerations. And now practically, uh, with the approach of this uh, corporation responsibility and uh, socially responsible financing, they are all moving towards the fundamental of Islamic finance. Now it's clearly discussed in Australia, in other countries supporting the objective of Islamic finance, which is socially responsible. This also will attract investors in investing in Islamic banks. That's why converting is business uh, opportunity for investors and shareholders. And now with the advancement of screening, just screening banks or, and uh, uh, and 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 uh, how to say and the uh, corporations based on ethical, social uh, fundamentals will give a great advantage to Islamic banks to be in front line in terms of uh, having better investors and better customers. This is just in short my answer to this question. Exactly here, doctor. Uh, third question, an Islamic bank received a settlement from its defaulted customer in the form of shares from a conventional bank, which is in the process of conversion to Islamic bank. Is this acceptable? I remember reading the fatwa of Kuwait Financial House. They are saying that this this a person who got loan from conventional to pay his installment of Islamic, they are saying that what he has done with the conventional is between him and the conventional, we cannot interfere. But for us, he has, he has uh, deposited or paid a cash money. And there is the famous qaida, uh, which means prohibition is, is not in the money by itself, but in the way he has invested the money. For me, if the shares, these shares, of course, if he's giving them shares, conventional shares, I don't think that, that this is what the person uh, intended from the questions. But if the proceeds from conventional shares, which is money transferred to the bank, the Islamic bank, my view is that there is no issue for this one. Because his relationship with the conventional is independent from his relationship with the Islamic bank. Wallahu a'lam. Excellent. Um, okay, um, the next one, uh, would it be acceptable from, uh, from, the, Sharia, from the Sharia perspective uh, to provide flexibilities for negligible percentage of non-compliance asset or liabilities in the process of conversion to Islamic banking? Generally, yes, but how? The problem is in the implementation, because if you go to IOF standards, they are, they are giving some rooms for flexibility, and I advise you to read the IOF standards, and flexibility should be there. Otherwise, you, we are making the conversion near to impossible. That's why my approach is when it comes to conversion, 
I have no issue with, I have issues with some, I have no issue with tawarruq when it comes to conversion, liquidity management. So those things that even they are bit to some people, they are not fully Sharia compliant, but in terms of conversion, it should be special treatment to conversion, either in terms of assets, processes, flexibility, it has to be all flexible. That's why if you go to the writing of the renowned scholars, they are saying when it comes to conversion, you should not be too strict. Otherwise you are prohibiting the process of conversion. And we remember that the Prophet ﷺ, when new converted to Islam came to him, and some of them, they are saying that I will, I will just perform five prayers, nothing beside this one. And he accepted their, their commitment. So ease and flexibility in terms of conversion, I see it based on my experience, one of the core consideration for the success of the conversion process without neglecting fundamentals. This is my, my point. Uh, I, will try, I will try to be brief because I don't want to go into details because each one has its part of it which is can be argued from this perspective and it can be uh, argued from that perspective. I don't want to go into these details, but for me, I think flexibility should be given to the conversion maybe, process. Maybe Otherwise, we'll start, we are going to. Pardon? No, sorry, go on. Yeah, otherwise I will, I will, we will just, we will just, just prevent the success of conversion of Islamic. Because you convert in the first stage, there will be, there may be some difficulties, but when the Islamic bank has established itself, it will, it will correct, it will adjust its direction easily and comfortably because it has well established and put itself into the perspective of business and experience. Maybe we can organize another webinar just on on different views, inshallah. Yes, I think I think uh, the I, I was I was expecting the questions to be into into the processes, but it's, <laughs> that most of the questions they are <laughs> with regards to Sharia Akbar. But that's fine. That's fine. I believe that, that there is no issue. No. But okay. processes uh, and uh, especially those who are in charge, who are directly or indirectly concerned with the conversion, I think the processes are very important for the smooth and successful conversion process. Okay, uh, question, I believe this is the fifth one. Um, in full conversion, what framework monetary authority or authorities uh, will follow among inflation targeting and monetary targeting and others? I believe that I'm not that expert in this area just to, to have to say to say that uh, this one i think this this uh, will refer to the direction of the central banks the regulation the regulators and the supervisors so inflation on the, i i believe that this is the the uh, the bank can do some adjustments but it cannot go beyond the the uh, regulator which is usually the central bank because they are guided by their terms and conditions and their, uh, how to say, capital adequacy and risk weightage and all those things. So that's generally what I can answer for this one. Okay. Um, but, it's, but it's a very good point to, to for, 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 I think, uh, for consideration and examination. Right. Uh, the next one, after conversion to Islamic banking, uh, is there empirical evidence and what are they uh, showing arguments for strong link and communication between the board of directors and the Sharia board. Could you please repeat the question? After conversion to Islamic banking, is there empirical evidence, and what are these evidences, uh, showing arguments for a strong link and communication between board of directors and the Sharia board? This depends on the regulatory supervisory body that is supervising the bank. I will give you an example. Central Bank of Malaysia is imposing, we call it 
Board Sharia Committee Engagement Session. This is the exact term. They impose on Board and Sharia Committee to have engagement session at least twice a year. One. They also recommend one of the Sharia Committee to be sitting in the Board for this is bridging and connection. And this has shown empirically that the perception and the the, the perception and also the position of the board towards Islamic banking has changed tremendously and the appreciation is that. I will give you the empirical example also. I, I, I am just just to maybe the, the person ask questions to get a comfort. I am chairman of Sharia committee and I am member of board. And I have been there for six years. And I have the my personal experience, but I cannot generalize it. But I can see tremendous change with regards to the board inter connections and interrelations and also perception. It's completely different. And it's positive. Proof of that, I can give you proof of that, is that Islamic banking in I think Islamic started with 18, now it's 42. 42 percent of the total asset. It's subsidiary. May Bank Islamic, it started with five or ten. Now it's it, it was 53. Now the, the the bulk of the assets of the ba May Bank, which is the biggest bank in Malaysia, the bulk of the asset is Islamic. This is because of in the, the interaction, connectivity. I think one of the critics of other than Southeast Asia, other than Malaysia, is that there is no interconnection between the board and Sharia committee. They are alien to 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 to, to each other, and uh, everyone is in his what is called uh, sauma, in different planet, and this has caused a break between the board and the Sharia committee. What is needed is the 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 initiative of Bank Nigara imposing an engagement session, two at least two engagement engagement session between the board of directors and Sharia committee. This will ensure smooth connection and appreciation of both effort of board and their constraint and also the effort of Sharia committee and also their limitation in terms of addressing the issues. Uh, okay, the next question is from the Sharia rule when a conventional, when a conventional bank is converting completely to an Islamic bank, when will it stop doing interest, op interest operations uh, as in uh, loans or deposits uh, and does it have to stop during the process of conversion or only after it is fully converted first of all the central bank will not give the license of islamic bank unless the, all the assets and the liability are clear when i say full conversion which means you decide to go for full conversion which means your time is limited because you are you want to tap the market first you decide to go for the market because you know that the, you have so many competitors and those who are especially opening windows uh, re, 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 renowned banks opening windows because the leverage is very high so when you go for conversion you will have just three to six months but you will not you cannot have uh, you, uh, within these three months, you are still, or six months, you are still conventional. You cannot have license for Islamic unless your assets and the liability, they are Sharia compliant. And you are not allowed from the day when you are licensed as, as converted Islamic bank, you are not allowed to do any conventional bank, uh, a conventional transaction because it will be Sharia non-compliant. And it's, it's a finding and the Sharia committee will not approve. If by mistake you will you will override the Sharia committee. You will be penalized by the central bank. And there are some banks who did, were penalized by millions of, of ringgit because of the, of the uh, breach of the breach of Sharia. Right. Uh, okay. I think. Um, we, okay, we have only about uh, 10, 11 minutes left. So maybe I'll, I'll select uh, <laughs> only two questions out of uh, the remaining ones. So, uh, okay, the first of the last two. Uh, what about default customers who can't pay installments before conversion? Is it possible for the bank to bring forward those defaulted account or non-performing loan account and convert into Islamic Akkad? Uh, once they once they uh, once they are able to pay the installment or change the status into performing account. 
Now this, I think the person did not, I think if you have an account, though they are, you are paying or you are not being to, uh, able to pay, it can be converted into Islamic account. As I mentioned, the easy way, which is for liquidity purposes, is Sharia compliant, is to convert the account into commodity murabaha, tawarruq. And the same, the same, the same, the same account and the same uh, obligations will remain, but will be moved from Islamic to conventional by purchasing commodity and sell it to third party. So I think this it has nothing to do with waiting and uh, because you cannot wait. If, if the bank is converting, either you pay all the installment before moving to the conventional or if you pay, uh, you pay all the installment, if you don't want to move to Islamic because you are conventional or you accept to moved into Islamic. That's why some of the banks, they will relinquish based on strategy, they will relinquish part of their outstanding profit or even loans to some customers to let them uh, terminate or early settle their, their profit. That's why some banks, they will lose some millions with the expectation of gaining them when they start the Islamic banks. And if you go to some experience without naming the banks, some banks, they have lost maybe uh, millions or tens of millions of their profit just to smoothly move to Islamic banks by discounting some of the interest or uh, even even forgive for, 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 for any, they will forego some of their interest for the sake of moving to Islamic bank. But this person, I think, if he wants to stay with conventional, he needs to pay. It will be outstanding. And if he wants to move to Islamic, with, even with the uh, inability to pay for the time being, but it can be moved to Islamic by, as I mentioned, uh, the commodity murabaha transfer of his of his uh, uh, obligations from conventional to Islamic. Jazakallah, <laughs> right. uh, Doctor. Um, we are we are having our last question now. Uh, because we're running out of time already. So the last question, I, um, I apologize to our, our participants because we cannot get through all the questions, but alhamdulillah, I think we, we managed to answer most of them. So uh, the last one is, is it, is it Sharia compliant to use funds from conventional source or conventional banks to open, to open an is Islamic subsidiary bank? I, I did not hear you. Can, can, could you repeat the yeah. question? Is it uh, Sharia compliant to use funds from a conventional source or a conventional bank to open an Islamic subsidiary bank? Yes, yes, there is no issue. Yes. Conventional bank, conventional bank can invest in Islamic bank. Conventional bank can invest in Islamic bank. They will put their money for Sharia compliant investment. Conventional bank, they can enter into syndicate financing. And it's allowed, if you go to standard of IOF, you write syndicate financing, they allow six or seven banks, three conventional, three Islamic, to enter into venture in terms of investment, condition that the investment is Sharia compliant, either murabaha or Musharaka. So, as I mentioned, the cash money, it's why, where you are using it that makes it Sharia compliant or non compliant. So now you speak about the source of income. This is cash, the source from the other side, but it became cash cash money. And when you decide to invest it into Islamic syndicate financing, no one will say that you are commingling your cash with my cash. And also parent bank can use their capital to establish subsidiary or, or a window. So there is no issue with this one. And IOF is not against of, of this uh, position and decision. All right, Jazakallah khair, Dr. Said. Thank, um, uh, thank you so much for the uh, for the presentation and the uh, the questions and uh, the answers. Uh, any last words, perhaps? Finally. I I believe that uh, the topic of conversion is a very important topic, especially with the move of many countries towards uh, converting their banks into either opening windows or subsidiaries. And uh, generally, I think we have to be very 
wise, comprehensive is in approaching the conversion. It has to be based on mainly rukhsa without undermining the Sharia principles. The rukhsa, which means you have to go for a bit of uh, ease and uh, and uh, and uh, relaxing to ensure a smooth conversion. But as I mentioned, condition that you will not compromise your fundamentals and uh, principles. And the second one is benefiting from previous experiences to examine what are the shortcomings, what are also the challenges, and how those previous experiences they have overcame their challenges. Because challenges, I, as I mentioned, some banks, it took them years and years to convert because of the resistance. Now, if those who are in charge of converting their banks to subsidiary or window, I think reading, examining those experiences will help a lot in saving time, energy, and cost. Third is countries, I think, if they have this move towards conversion, I think regulator, supervisor, they need to be proactive in establishing guideline to ensure consistency, to standardize the conversion, to ensure that they are all, everything is in place. Because if they do so, they will save a huge time, cost, energy, problems in the future. Whereas if they will leave them converting by their own, by their own ishtihad, one with the experience of Southeast Asia, the other with the experience of Middle East, the other one is North, North uh, the Europe, you will have a bulk of complex style, modes, approach of conversion that may end up in different practices within the same jurisdiction. And this will not serve the industry, the country in particular, and the, and, and the, 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 the industry as, as a whole. It's a huge responsibility, a complex process, but with the existing standard standards for conversion, guidelines, uh, circulars, and with the existing experience, I believe those engaged in conversion will have a successful, comprehensive, and smooth conversion after benefiting from those previous experience. And I thank you very much for this opportunity and hope to see you in next presentation. Thank you very much. Inshallah. Jazakallah khair, Dr. Sayyid Burawa, and thank you for all the attendees on, uh, <laughs> on uh, Zoom and on uh, YouTube. Um, on behalf of ISRA and ISRA Consulting, thank you for your participation and hopefully we will see you in the next uh, live webinar, which is happening on the uh, on the 8th of September, uh, where we're, the topic will be the leadership of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, presented by Professor Dr. Ashraf Muhammad Hashim, the CEO of ISRA Consulting. So you wouldn't want to miss that. Uh, if you want more info and uh, to register for that webinar, you feel free to go to if360.isra.my. Right, with that, Jazakallah Khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa barakatuh. Thank you very much. Okay, assalamu alaikum.